Yes. So in previous lecture, we have started with mesh analysis, and we have seen there are four cases, four types of problems are there in this. So first, first one we have completed. First one we have completed, which was this problem. What is first case? In first case, only voltage sources are there, and along with voltage sources, resistance network will be there. So. n number of networks or uh, n number of meshes may be there but having only voltage sources so that is the first type then in second type along with these voltage sources current sources may be present and these current sources are at the outer side of the loop means that current source is not common to any of the two meshes right so that is the second case and third case is the if dependent sources are there that is the third case and fourth case is if in between two meshes the current source is common to them that will be the special case which is the super mesh okay so in last lecture we have completed with first numerical of first type now Let us see. Uh, then later on, we have uh, sim uh, simulated that. I have provided you the link, short link, which is here, and this circuit, which is working, and the current meters. They are reading the same current, which is you have calculated through the analysis. Okay. So even you can type this link. in uh, this url you can type in uh, the uh, particular uh, uh, google uh, and then you can uh, get this circuit or you can uh, go to the simulation software and then click this link you will be able to open that particular software and particular problem okay so let us say uh, let us solve this numerical next numerical which is of type 2 here a current source is added so determine the mesh currents i1 i2 i3 in the network of figure 2.61 example number 2.36 from the book which i have already given to you ravish singh okay so here you will find that there are three meshes 1 2 and 3 in one of the mesh it is having a current source and this current source is not common between any two of the meshes so it is outer side it is at the outer side of this mesh so that means this is the purely type 2 problem only voltage sources one voltage source second voltage source two voltage sources are there along with few resistances and one current source which is at the outer side of this particular loop or mesh okay so now what you have to do you have to apply kvl to particular meshes which are not containing the current source and to the particular mesh which is containing current source for that particular is that directly you can write the current equation i3 is equal to 1 ampere so this for third mesh you can write directly i3 is equal to 1 ampere or i3 equal to 1 so this is for mesh 3 and that is one of the equation now let us apply kvl to first loop so for this loop if you will see the direction of current clockwise we have assumed and here the drop is the potential is dropping so it will be a negative sign so we will begin with this voltage source having minus 30 so for applying kvl to mesh 1 
so this is minus 30 then for this resistance through this resistance only one current i1 is flowing and it is a drop across a resistor so it will be minus 6 times i1 then for this 15 ohm resistance current two currents are flowing one is in this direction from right to left and another current i2 which is flowing from left to right right so there are two currents flowing through this 15 ohm resistor and we are writing kvl for loop 1 or mesh 1 so dominating current or the major current will be i1 so i1 minus i2 will be the resultant current flowing through this 15 ohm resistor so the drop will be minus 15 into bracket i1 minus i2 equal to zero so this is kvl for loop 1 now rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 club all the terms of i2 if i3 club all the terms of i3 and constants on one side so we have written this equation in simplified form as 21i1 minus 15i2 equal to minus 30 so this minus 6 and this minus 15 will become minus 21 and we will go on that side so it will become plus 21 this plus 15 i2 will go on that side so it will become minus 15 i2 and this minus 30 will remain on this side only so it will remain minus 30 so this is equation number 1 let us say then apply kvl to mesh 2 so for this mesh 2 let us start with this resistance 10 ohm so in this 10 ohm resistance there are two currents flowing one is i2 and another is i3 and we are writing kvl for equation 2 uh, mesh 2 so i2 current will be the dominating one or it will be considered as a major current so minus 10 into i2 minus i3 will be the current flowing through 10 ohm then for 15 ohm again two currents are flowing i2 and i1 i2 is the dominating current for this loop so it will be current flowing through 15 ohm will be i2 minus i1 so the drop across that 15 ohm will become minus 15 into i2 minus i1 then here the battery we are current i2 is flowing from negative end of battery to positive uh, end of battery so it is a rise in potential so this 50 volt will be plus uh, having positive sign so plus 50 and this minus 5 only i2 current is flowing so minus 5 i2 will be drop across this 5 ohm resistor equal to zero so this is kvl for mesh 2 again simplify this rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 club all the terms of i2 club all the terms of i3 on one side and all the constant terms on another side so the resultant equation will become minus 15 i1 plus 30 i2 minus 10 i3 equal to 50 this is let us say second equation for third mesh we have already uh, written the equation that i3 equal to 1 since current source is there in this uh, particular loop there is no need to write any kvl for this particular loop so directly we can Uh, write the equation of current as i3 equal to 1 ampere because through this uh, uh, power supply or uh, current source only one current is flowing so i3 equal to 1 ampere will be this equation now solve these equations 1 2 and 3 simultaneously with the help of either you can use uh, cramer's rule you can solve them simultaneously by cancelling one variable then another and then another to give the value of value of i1 i2 and i3 or you can directly calculate it on the calculator which i have told you the procedure in the previous class so the with that procedure we can 
uh, solve these three equations but you have to take care that here for i3 there is no coefficient so you take care that uh, while writing this equation number 1 21 i1 minus 15 i2 plus 0 i3 so for i3 you have to write the coefficient as 0 don't make mistake here people uh, students may skip that particular uh, um, uh, reading and uh, then uh, it will be uh, wrong answer okay so solving this simultaneously you will get i1 equal to 0 i2 is equal to 2 ampere and i3 is equal to 1 ampere so these are the answers which we have calculated then we'll simulate this on the same um software this is the short link which i have provided to you so i'll copy it directly and uh, go directly to the circuit i copied this and i'll open i'll stop sharing this screen and then i'll share with you another screen yes uh first i'll share it now um, is this screen visible yes sir ah so in this i'll put this particular link http kulam/tinurl.com and i'll enter so directly i'll get this circuit since this circuit i have already built and stored it at a particular location you can also access this particular from any point okay so this is the circuit is it the same is it the same from numerical yes yes sir ha ah. so v2 voltage is 30 volt this 6 ohm resistor 50 volt battery then 5 ohm resistor 15 ohm resistor 10 ohm resistor and 1 ampere current source and i have connected here one emitter here one emitter and here is another emitter so this was my loop 1 so i1 reading is coming as 0 ampere the same we have calculated through calculation then this was the mesh 2 so this is i2 i2 is 2 ampere the same current we have calculated and this is i3 third mesh which is 1 ampere now the same readings we have got through simulation also and the same is visible in this okay so when i will stop sharing this screen and uh, start sharing another screen or point screen so is it visible yes so type 2 first numerical we have solved now we'll go for another numerical of the same type having more current sources let us say solve this numerical 2.37 
find the current through 5 ohm resistor in the network of figure 2.62 so the figure 2.62 is given which is having three current sources so can you observe in this mesh one there are four meshes this is mesh one containing one current source this is mesh 2 containing another current source this is mesh 3 containing another current source so these three meshes they are containing current sources but the current sources are not common between any of the two meshes so that means this type problem is clearly of type 2 at the outer side of this loop every loop at the outer side the current source is present it is not common between any of the two meshes that's why this is type 2 numerical and having a voltage source and few resistances so let us start with this numerical what we want to do we have to calculate the current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor so let us mark first all the mesh currents there are four meshes so uh, clockwise direction will assume it as a positive and let us mark clockwise direction current i1 i2 i3 and i4 flowing through all the four meshes now what is first step apply kvl to the particular loop which is not containing any of the current source and for the loops or meshes which are containing current source directly you can write the equations for current so i1 is equal to 4 ampere i2 is equal to 3 ampere and i4 is equal to minus 3 ampere will be the equations for this three loops is it correct i1 is equal to 4 i2 is equal to 3 and i4 is equal to minus 3 because the direction of i4 and this 3 ampere current source they are exactly opposite that's why this minus sign will come otherwise for these two loops for i1 and i2 the direction of i1 is same as that of 4 ampere current and direction of i2 is same as that of 3 ampere current so i1 is equal to plus 4 ampere and i2 is equal to plus 3 ampere right so these three equations we have written equation number 1 2 and 3 now apply kvl to mesh 3 so this mesh which is exactly at the center of this circuit so for this mesh will apply kvl now so let us start with this 5 ohm resistor so through this 5 ohm resistor there are two currents flowing one is i3 and another is i1 both are in the opposite direction and i3 since we are writing kvl for uh, loop number 3 so mesh 3 through which the i3 current is the dominating current or the main current that's why we'll take the current resultant current flowing through this 5 ohm will be i3 minus i1 so the drop across this 5 ohm resistor will become minus 5 into i3 minus i1 then again through this 2 ohm resistance also two currents are flowing exactly in opposite direction i3 and i2 i3 is the main current for this so will take i3 minus i2 so the uh, voltage drop across this 2 ohm resistor will be 2 minus 2 into i3 minus i2 then for this 2 ohm resistor again two currents are flowing i3 and i4 again in opposite direction so it will become the drop will become minus 2 into i3 minus i4 and for this battery we are going from positive terminal to negative terminal so it is drop in potential so as drop in potential is considered as negative so this voltage sign will be minus 2 equal to 0 so this is equation number 4 or you can simplify this equation and further 
you can write it as a equation number 4 so write the terms of i1 club all i1 terms club all i2 terms club all i3 terms together and i4 terms together and constants on another side now for from this equation 1 2 and 3 directly we know the values of i1 as 4 ampere i2 as 3 ampere and i4 as minus 3 ampere so directly substitute these three values in this equation so that only unknown will be i3 and directly you can get the value of i3 from equation number 4 and uh, sorry i3 from equation number 4 and i3 is coming as 2 ampere now what is your uh, you have calculated value of i1 i2 i3 and i4 but in your numerical problem it is asked to find the current flowing through 5 ohm resistor not i1 i2 i3 i4 so you will have to find current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor now current flowing there are two currents flowing in 5 ohm one is i1 and another is i3 exactly in opposite directions so first find out which current magnitude is more so i1 is 4 ampere and i3 is 2 ampere so magnitude of i1 is 4 and i3 is 2 so i1 is more so i'll say that the net or resultant current flowing through this 5 ohm will be i1 minus i3 so through 5 ohm resistor current flowing will be i1 minus i3 is equal to 4 minus 2 will be equal to 2 ampere so 2 ampere current is flowing through 5 ohm resistor okay then again I have simulated it in the same. This link I have provided it to you. This is HTTP. You can uh, take this link. You can copy this link and put it in the circuit. Um, sorry, not in the circuit. You can. you can put it directly to the browser and you will get the particular circuit so i'll first change my screen and then i'll show it to you i'll stop sharing this screen again i'll share the screen is it visible now this is the previous circuit of for fallstart.com so i'll delete this i'll put no sir it is not visible not visible no now is it visible no now? still not visible okay do do you wait yes now is it visible yes sir yeah so this circuit is same which we have solved the numerical 2 ohm resistor 2 ohm resistor a battery then 5 ohm resistor and three current sources 3 ampere 3 ampere and 4 ampere okay so with this i have connected one ammeter in this 5 ohm resistor in series with this 5 ohm resistor and it is giving me the reading as 2 ampere and the same current reading i have calculated is it correct yes getting the same i'll stop sharing this again and i'll share again
this thing. Yes, is it okay? Yes. Right. So type two problem is over type one and two. Do you have any difficulty or doubt in type one and two? Yes. If not, then we'll move to type three. Okay. So in type three numerical. we are having dependent sources so let us say there are two dependent sources this is one which is this source which is type of this source dependent source yes anybody i have told you four types of dependent sources which are they voltage dependent voltage source current dependent voltage source then current dependent current source voltage dependent current source so which is this type it is very simple if polarities are given in this diamond if plus and minus signs are given in this diamond it is a voltage source right so in both these cases polarities are marked here plus and minus plus and minus so both these are the voltage sources and here the relation is given to you 10 times ib so it is current dependent here ib is given means i is given so it is a current dependent voltage source here also 5 times ia okay so 5 times ia means this is also current dependent voltage source so these two dependent sources are there which both are the voltage sources and they are current dependent voltage sources so what do you mean by this is that this particular voltage with this polarity as positive and this as negative depends on 10 times ib where ib is the current flowing through this branch 5 ohm resistor this is ib marked over here can you observe this so this is ib and the ib current is flowing through this 10 times of this ib will be the potential available across this particular voltage source right and similarly for this voltage source this polarity is positive this as negative and the magnitude is 5 times ia where ia is flowing through this 5 ohm resistor here it is ia so 5 times ia will be the voltage of this particular source then the network is having two voltage sources which are independent one of 5 volt and 10 volt and three resistances of 5 ohm 10 ohm each okay so this is type 3 problem so how to tackle this type 3 problem it is same as that of type 1 problem only assigning first the clockwise currents in two meshes as there are two meshes will show two assume two currents i1 and i2 clockwise which are flowing through this particular meshes 1 and 2 now for this ia for mesh 1 ia is the current flowing through this and i1 is current flowing through this mesh 1 so ia and i1 both are same so ia is equal to i1 this is equation number 1 for this particular mesh this current is ib and current flowing through this branch is also i2 so i2 is equal to ib or ib is equal to i2 this is second equation so first write these two equations and then apply kvl to mesh 1 so if you will apply kvl to mesh 1 this 5 volt let us start with this 5 volt the current uh, is flowing in this direction so the drop is rising drop from current is flowing from negative of battery to positive end of battery 
so it is plus 5 volt so plus 5 through this resistance current flowing is i1 and drop is 5 ohm so minus 5 into i1 will be drop across this 5 ohm resistor then for this voltage source current is flowing from positive end of battery to negative end of battery so it is a dropping potential so drop in potential it is termed in termed as a negative sign so minus 10 into so minus 10 ib will be this current uh, this voltage minus 10 ib then for this 10 ohm resistance there are two currents flowing in this one is i1 and i2 so as usual you can write minus 10 into i1 minus i2 as it is a first loop or i1 is the dominating current and for this last um, dependent source plus to minus current is flowing from positive to negative so it is drop in potential so it will be minus 5 ia equal to 0 now you can substitute the values of ia and ib from equation 1 and 2 ia is i1 and ib is i2 so the equation will be only in terms of i1 and i2 now you can club all the terms of i1 i2 terms they are getting cancelled to each other this minus 10 i2 and plus 10 i2 they will cancel each other and phi uh, 10 and phi so it will become 20 i1 is equal to phi so that means i1 is equal to 1 by 4 or 0.25 ampere let us say this is third equation then apply kvl to this loop second loop second mesh again you can write this is rising potential so it will be plus 5 ia minus 10 i2 minus i1 then this minus 5 i2 and this minus 10 equal to 0 so this is kvl for mesh 2 then again substitute the values of ia here ia as i1 and you will get the equation in terms of i1 i2 and the constant so it is 15 i1 minus 15 i2 is equal to 10 let us say this is fourth equation now i1 value you are knowing i1 is equal to 0.25 substitute in this you will get the value of i2 and i2 you are getting it as i2 is equal to minus 0.416 ampere so you got the values of i1 and i2 and in your question it was obtained the branch currents in network that means only i1 and i2 values we were interested to find out then we have simulated this i have given you this link small link you can right take this small link and you can put it in the browser so that you will get this particular circuit and the values which we are getting i2 as minus 416 milliampere that is minus 0.416 same as this which we have calculated and i1 value i am getting it as 250 milliampere that is 0.25 ampere same values i am getting through this now how to make this connections of dependent sources so i think uh, time is running out so in uh, next lecture i will show you how we have made this connections okay is it okay okay sir yes okay sir right so uh, and again uh, one thing i'll stop recording first